Okay, welcome back. Uh, hour number three, we're going to talk about something very interesting this hour. Always fascinating. And some people just simply call the phenomenon the cone heads. It has to do with uh, skulls, uh, of which there are many. I don't know how many altogether have been found, but there are certainly many hundreds, if not thousands, in Peru and South America on the western side. Uh, I'm, I'm curious to find out more about this uh, whenever the subject comes across my desk. And so I've invited back tonight to talk to us about this, uh, Brian Forrester. He is an expert in the field. And if you look at Brian in the guest section and uh, click on that name, you'll go right to his website. And it is, if you're not online right now, uh, hiddenincatours.com. But the most important thing about that page, beside the fact that you can actually go down there and look at these things, are some of the remarkable pictures um, Brian, are you there? Can you hear me all right? Yes, sir. Oh, good. Welcome back. How are you? Oh, great. Thank you very much for um, having me back. Sure. We're, uh, the Skype thing always gets me. You sound so perfectly digitally clear. It's like you're in the next room. Where are you located? Oh, I'm in, in a little uh, little town on the coast of Peru, south of Lima, uh, called Paracas. Isn't that amazing? Listen to the quality of the audio. It's, uh, it's amazing. Not, not a telephone. He's, he's right there. On the internet. Well, all right. Let's uh, let's go back to the beginning on this this thing about what we call the cone heads, which have been, of course, uh, explained away by so many people as head binding and other uh, cultural anomalies that come along in terms of behavior and style and the rest of it. But what is really interesting is the the video that we have up, which shows a well, you tell the story about it. it. This is a remarkable video. Well, it's probably the most remarkable find ever. And um, this uh, young child or baby was found about a year ago up in the highlands of Peru outside of Cusco. Um, and I've taken uh, medical professionals, doctors, dentists, uh, nurses, to inspect this baby and just ask their advice. And the consensus is that they think that the baby died um, obviously less than a year old. Some say is as young as a month. But the teeth, uh, the dentists say, are the teeth of a seven-year-old child. Um, the other important thing is that the head is the size of the chest. So it's massive in relation to the size of the body. Now, this is, this is uh, a child estimated to be how old when it died? Uh, it, it varies depending upon the doctor, definitely less than a year. Some say um, six months old, some say a month old. Um, it's because there's a hole still open in the top of the head. Yes, the uh, soft the, spot. The, yeah. yeah, the fontanelle. And so that should, you know, normally should close at about a year. So, um, you know, it's, it's a real enigma. And what's intriguing <clears throat> is that, you know, it, it really confounds all the medical people so far that they've taken. They just, they can't believe it. The video is called Ancient Aliens in Our Mist. And if you go to headlines and just count down uh, below the Japan stories, uh, three blocks, it's right there. One, two, three. And uh, it's right at the top. So you'll see it uh, very simply. It's at the beginning of the third news block. Ancient Aliens in Our Midst. And it starts out with a, a, a very uh, fascinating Still picture demonstration of what this uh, what this child looked like. Now, what what comes to mind immediately is the birthing process with a head like that. Uh, you know, how do you get that out of there without doing great damage, or were these were these people physically structured in such a way that that would be a normal kind of a birth? This is this is a very large object to pass through a normal human. Uh, birth process. Yeah, well, that's actually the next thing that we're trying to to look for is we're trying to find skeletons of adults and of of course females to see if their hip structure is different than a normal uh, human female, uh, because of, as you said, the birth canal would have to be massive to allow that head to freely pass through. The eye sockets on this <coughs> skeleton are enormous and the uh the right eye our left as we look at it apparently still has uh 
ancient desiccated tissue. Do we have any idea how old this this particular skeleton is? Well, unfortunately, not yet. It's obviously hundreds of years old. Uh, some people have said that it's a, a Hollywood prop, but it's in a museum run by uh, a man who um, doesn't, you know, have any money. Nobody could afford in a little town in the highlands of Peru to pay for something like that. So it's hundreds of years old, but we're hoping to get carbon-14 testing to tell us exactly how old it is. The, uh, the Oh, by the way, the idea that this... This little fellow or or girl died uh, very young is is clear and obvious. Uh, but you look at the molars in the back; uh, they're 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 enormous. It, it, this again, this is a very big child. And yeah, there's exactly. A, there's, a, there's a picture on your website of somebody holding this uh, small skeleton, and I don't. I don't know how how big it would be, but for a, less than a year old, uh, wow! Yeah, and that is actually Senior Renato, who who is the owner of the museum. He's a professional anthropologist, and he he you know he himself calls it an alien. I don't know if it is because we'd have to have a DNA tested, but that's that's what he thinks it is. He doesn't doesn't mince words. First of all, this child, there's no way you can even begin to talk about. Uh, the binding of a skull of a child that little. There's no evidence whatsoever of it. That's the skull it was born with. Well, also it's the shape because um, at the Paracas Museum here, we have a number of different skulls, and you can you can easily identify those that have been bound because the uh, you know the ancient technique was to put a board on the front and the back of the skull and then wrap it with cord or some kind of textile. So you get a flattening, but uh, that baby or child, as well as some other examples we have, the shape is so complicated. There's actually a protrusion in the forehead, like a bulge, and you couldn't do that by simple binding. Right. Um, no. They, yeah, they look like they, you know, they look like a natural skull, but not a natural human skull. So the idea of the binding would perhaps be the locals trying to imitate these original elongated skull beings to pay homage to them somehow or, or emulate them as godlike creatures? Exactly, exactly. And that's what the book that David Childress and I wrote, you know, it, it was a global phenomenon. And um, all, the, all the ancient cultures say that the reason why, that they, why they did this binding was to replicate what the ancestors looked like. Wow. Oh. All right, it's fascinating, and uh, you can get a look at it by just looking at the video there and that third news block down, Ancient Aliens in Our Midst. This is a, a for all of you in the medical professions out there, I think you'll really find this uh, very interesting, and everyone else as well.